right. Welcome to Documentation Office Hours. It is the 20th of September. Um, great to have everyone here. So topics that I had on the agenda, 2.313 change log review, Hacktoberfest with two ideas there, and then a contributing to open source workshop at DevOps World that I wanted to discuss. Any other topics others would like to bring? Um, I, I created some issues and I wanted to know if you'd seen them and if you wanted to yell at me or if I'd done them right. Good. Okay. So let's, let's, so what we would do is review issues on Jenkins.io repo. Yes. Good. Okay. Let's do that. All right. Very good. And, and that's something we should probably systematically do. Okay. Any other topics? <laughs> Uh, no, no, nothing from my. Okay. All right. Well, so then, Diraj, let's take on the change log review. So I'm going to maximize my screen. So what I yes. saw was developer is still first in the list. Then there is one that, that came later that, as far as I can tell, is not developer that probably should have been earlier in the list. But other than that, so developer, but in this case, it's developer and an RFE. And so I think what it's choosing is it's putting bugs after RFEs, even if they are developer. And this developer RFE should be after the bug, I think. Right. So we need to move this developer entry to the end, right? We do, but I think we'll have to do it after the release because if we move it now, the tool mm -hmm. will just put it back. So right. I, I just noted, I guess maybe what we should do is, is in the changelog generator, we ought to ought to record something there about, no, not that one, about this one where we say, see, it's probably in here and changelog generator. Or is that the place where the, where the, uh, I don't remember actually, now that I'm thinking about it, where is the changelog generator repository? There it is, okay, let's find it here. Okay, so this one, I think we ought to, oh, here it is, order, okay, this is, this is the one where we probably ought to update it and say developer and internal um, entries are always to be after any entries that are not flagged with developer or internal. Um, 2.313 automated change log placed developer and internal before a RFEs before a bug that was neither developer nor internal. Fair enough. Yes. Okay. All right. So, and that one we'll just have to fix after the fact. Uh, I saw this and the entry one thing. I've gone in actually and removed that already. So the next time it gets reordered, the next time it gets regenerated, it will, it will take out that entry one. Let's see. That was in uh, GitHub core pull requests. So I just wanted to show you that I'd made that edit. Okay, so this one, it now says allow a plugin to dynamically insert jars into its class path. So phrased in the present tense, simple sentence. Okay for you, Diraj, if we go with that phrasing. 
think yes so just to confirm the jar shouldn't be capitalized or it's good this way in in other locations in the change log that's a good question in other locations in the change log as far as i recall it's not capitalized let's look at it just to be sure though good question content sure. data change logs So let's look real quickly at usages of jar. Oh, no, there are two cases where it's uppercase here. All right, so good catch. Okay, when used as a file name suffix, it's done in lowercase, but that makes sense. Oddly enough, there is no case in the LTS where it, well, where it uses the word jar. Interesting. Okay, let's go back to weekly. Uppercase, uppercase, uppercase. I think you're right. I think it's supposed it's it stands for Java Archive, right? How does how does Java do it? Oracle how to write jar. Creating and they do it all uppercase. Yeah. Very good. Nice catch, Diraj. Ah, but then I see jar command options. Yeah, because it is a jar, a lowercase jar command, right? Uh, well, it's got jar arguments. So how about like this? If it's either a jar file into its class path or jar files. Into oh, yes. Class path. There you go. Very good. I like that. Okay. Singulars and plurals are so silly. Bless me. Right. Allow a plugin to dynamically insert a jar file into its class path. Okay, good. Nice catch. Thank you. That, that's one I had not considered. Excellent. All right. So, so we've reviewed this one. Now we've got another one, which is the PR title is remove Akuma. And we really should look at this one because I'm fascinated by it. Uh -huh. I missed completely what the subject of the thing was. Okay, so long description about why this thing is existing that tells us, hey, there was this old library that was at last release six years ago, and uh, it doesn't seem to be used by any plugin. It's only used by core in two places, and it really doesn't isn't used for its primary reason. It used for these two things. And notice the class name, com.sun. So uh -huh. explicitly a reserved class for sun. So really nothing we should, would want to trust. And so what he did was um, Basil, who, who created it, says, suggested this as the description or suggested description around that. And I created that text. So let's see. He said, I think the main point is the daemon argument to Java has been removed without replacement. But the remove, he, he recommended use the removed keyword. And I think he's right. Sorry, I hope I didn't deafen you. Okay, so 
So the idea was remove the demon argument from Jenkins command line arguments, replace the Akoma library with simpler implementations using process tree. And then in the, when we get to the LTS, we'll have to include this in the upgrade guide. So have we checked the whole source to see if that dice dice demon argument is showing up in other examples? Hmm. A good and that's question. going to be a nightmare of a thing because people sometimes do screenshots rather than code it in. Yeah, so, so I, I would be shocked if it did occur, but let's find it. That's a good question. Let's see, how do I add? Oh, let's just look. We'll look for quote? demon. Will quote dash dash demon do it? Uh, I, I didn't think so, but let's try it. Uh, I'm maybe use that double one. Quote, yeah. There we go. Okay, the dash, the double dashes says end of arguments. Okay, okay so partials change log dash old. And so this is only referenced mm -hmm. in in archive okay, change so. logs. And archive okay. change logs, there's really we don't change them because that would be attempting right. to change history. Right. So 1.500, 1 1.397, 1 things that are ancient. Okay, good question, Meg. So answer is not used, not referenced in any documentation, okay. any current documentation. We hope, unless they have a, a command line that they did a screenshot of. Right, and that one, I think we accept that if we see it, we'll if someone complains, we'll fix it. Right. Okay, so anything else on this one? Okay, next one then a regression fix. JCAS configurations could not refer to view related permissions. Regression in 2.302. And I think that's fine, although it needs to be up at the top here before the developer and before the internal. But yeah. it's a good, good description. Any objections to that one? So whenever we write a description to an entry, do we talk about the fix or do we describe the problem? I think we want to describe the problem in, in terms that the user will understand. Do you feel like that's not describing the problem? Uh, I think uh, it's just uh, describing the problem. So uh, I thought, well, well, I don't know about this. So I was just asking how the entries uh, are written. Yes, well, so here's, here's what the user perceives when they mm -hmm. try to, when they try to start up Jenkins 2.303.1 with a particular definition in their configuration as code, it fails. Okay. So now, good question, how could we, we could say it allow JCAS configurations to again define view related permissions. So, no, wait a second. Oh yeah, so this was a regression in 302. So it did get into 303.1. And so we will need this as well in 303.2's change log. Okay. So other suggestions for how to phrase it? Diraj, go ahead. Uh, of what is exactly written in messages. So this looks good. Okay. All right. Yeah. I mean, we could, I, we could, we could start the sentence with a verb 
instead of starting with a noun. But for me, it feels okay. Meg, any guidance from you on this one? Oh, I'm wanting to go more prosaic, and that's probably being a writer, not a geek. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I'm, I, I live in the netherland between the two. Some writers often find me too geeky. Um, I mean, a little bit of me wants to say that in 2.302, or, and it actually lists the really, all the releases that are affected, um, that the permission groups and permissions were not registered appropriately and this meant that the jcast configurations could not refer something in that order but that's probably too verbose right well and and so that that it's good what you're highlighting the the uh the the behavior is jenkins fails to start right and so if if we want to switch the phrasing i would um we could do something with allow jenkins to start with view related permission group definitions or view related permission definitions because a permission group and a permission are both part of it so allow jenkins to start with a view related permissions definition in jcast configuration yeah doesn't sound like it's resonating with you still it's i i can't dance to it denise um, <laughs> okay. And that's an old song that you probably don't know. Um, do you remember <laughs> Welcome Back, Cotter? I, I, I do, but I don't remember that song, okay, even though yeah. I remember Welcome Back, Cotter. Yeah. Um, she begins, okay, it's, Jenkins will start fine if you haven't used Jcast, right? Right. And Jenkins will start fine if you have not defined a view related permission in Jcast. Right. If you defined a view related permission in JCAS, 2.303.1 would fail to start. That sounds good. What you just said. Yeah, but but we want to phrase it in the oh. in I think we want to phrase it in the form of what was fixed, not what was broken. Uh, oh, okay. Um let's see. God, anything that you how, do that's that way is complicated. The simple stuff. How about is... how about allow JCAS configurations to define view related permissions? Here, I'm going to put the text in here. It, we know it can't can't do this, but mm. allow to define view related permissions. Period. Can we have a second sentence that says, "Sure." See, I'm also wondering the regression in 2.302 .02 makes sense to people who live in QA. I have to do a double take on to what it means. Um, okay. Could we have a second sentence that says, "In releases, whatever," and tell we, what all of them are? We comma. could. We could, but we've never done that for any okay. any of these previous. This is this is. This regression in 302 syntax is a standard, standard thing of the change log. Then we keep to the standard, yeah. And um, allow Jenkins to start when the JCAS configuration defines. Oh, oh, good, good. That's very good. Like that. Yeah, that oh that actually I could dance to that I think. Okay, great. Okay, All right. yeah. So let's take that on and we're gonna go here and see if I can find the pull request here. Okay. I like the face. I can dance to it. <laughs> Okay, is that all right? Yes. Okay, yes. so we, we got that one, good. All right. And we can cancel that because we'll let it come in. From, all right, good, 
Next one then, WebSock connections did not work when the Jenkins controller was running Java 11 and using self-terminated TLS. Okay, so WebSock um, connections now work when or? Yeah, now let's see. So, okay, so how do we phrase it in the present tense and yeah, exactly. Okay, so I think that, I think it's web. It, okay, let me bring up the. Instead of did not work, make it now work. Right. Okay. So. Okay. So web socket connections work even when the jink is running. Java 11, and using, is that how we say that Jenkins is running, J Jenkins running Java 11 sounds to me like they've got a Java 11 agent, not oh, like okay. Jenkins is running on Java 11, but is that, Yeah. what good is question. the proper terminology? Um, yeah, it's, I, I might use on or with, I don't know that I've got a better. So, so I was more concerned about this even, so. Yeah. Or could WebSocket connections now work when? Oh, oh yes, there you go. That's very good. Okay. Yeah. Hang on, I've got an urgent call that I need to take. I'll be right back. Okay. Sure. So, Meg, uh, I'm not really good at grammar, but uh, sh should this work be work or works? No, connections now work. Okay. Yeah, that works. Yeah, English is it's weird that the verb is doesn't have an S to go plural. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so much fun. So you do origami or only for Red Hat? Uh, I did it three two years ago for my college committee project where we had where I was in charge of decoration something. So I made dinosaurs, little, little dinosaurs using origami. Okay. So that was the first time. And this is the second time. So not a regular one. Okay. It's fascinating. I'm I'm not artistic. But when I was a kid, we did, yeah. I learned to make a box and there was like a decision maker that you did a cert, I don't know, that it folded <laughs> and told you yes, no, or maybe or something. Yes. I never learned to make a crane, which seems to be the one origami thing that everybody learns first. Oh. So, so what are your interests then? My interests outside of work. Mm -hmm. I like to, I still, my, I studied uh, medieval Jewish history in the university and I still study that a little in my spare time. Oh, so I do, okay. I do history and I've expanded. I do more history now than I did when I was actually a student where I narrowed down. Now I can study more stuff. Well, that, that's, that's geeky, right? And you were saying you're not. Yeah, non-technical geeky, but, and as far as, I mean, you know, the middle ages, actually the middle ages had a lot of technological innovations, but, mm -hmm. and I'm heavily involved. I have a dog and two rabbits and they take a lot of time, so. And I'm a boring person. I don't do exciting things. So oh, what so do you, you have do? Dog and... uh -huh. uh, you, you have dog and rabbit? I have a dog and two house rabbits, yes. Wow, that's really nice. Yeah. Uh, and about me, um, you mean out, outside of work, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So I like to sketch and I started uh, doing facial portraits. So I even, I start, I mainly uh, draw facial portraits of humans and uh, I do it with the help of charcoal pencil. And uh, it 
so i've made a sketch of myself as well it's it's pretty embarrassing to say that i sketched myself but it turned out wait to be pretty leonardo good leonardo did it it's good enough for leonardo it's good enough for me <laughs> <laughs> oh, i i didn't know about that that's great some people think that Le- that um the mona lisa is a self portrait actually of leonardo yeah in drag i guess i mean he, he turned himself female but they think that 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 may indeed have been his face that he used for that. Mm. So it's very fit the Mona Lisa painting is very famous uh, due to what I don't know much about it. So it's uh, job some geometrical calculations of the facial feature or what. Yeah. I just I and I don't know that much about it. I just remember reading that some place that Oh. um several art historians have speculated that the mona lisa mm-hmm. might be a self portrait they didn't mm-hmm. go into whether that was just cuz it was a face he liked or was it it was his sexual identity i mean was he a transvestite i haven't seen anybody who went that direction on it so but it doesn't mean there hasn't been somebody so right but That's and nice. i think it's all speculation too so so but you are artistic mm-hmm. then yes Uh, I had done that. I am so I have I did like music and poetry and all of that sort of stuff in school, but the plastic arts I got thrown out of an art class because I wasn't trying, <laughs> trying my darndest. But she couldn't believe that I did all these other things and that I had absolutely no abilities in the plastic arts. So not the high school. Well, you said you do music and poetry, right? I I did when I was in school. Yes, I long lost everything i once knew uh, oh mark's That's... off the phone he's going to make us work again oh okay i <laughs> thought you had solved all the world's problems and i was ready to hear the <laughs> solutions ah we have did you know that giraj is an artist a sketch artist I did not. Well, that's oh, so so you might be willing to to consider donating some sketches for the Jenkins logo and that kind of thing or is it or is logo not your style? You you rather do real life. Uh, yes, I do actually real life pencil charcoal pencil sketches. Oh. But I can definitely try the logo. <laughs> Because I went through the collection and I was no I think there is no logo from India. I'm not De- Yeah, well, I think there's one from Bengaluru. But oh, okay. but there are plenty of there's plenty of opportunity for other logos. That is there are so many ways that we could do um parodies and spoofs and There's so much fun to be had with artwork if you've actually got talent. I have no talent when it comes to that. I so. have but I actually have a question for Diraj. I all the stuff we do it seems to me that it's very western europe centric. Does it seem that way to you in India? I mean maybe we should have more diversity in some of our logos and stuff. Maybe they should reflect. Uh, by all the stuff we do you mean in Jenkins? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So Uh, I I do not feel that way because Jenkins is not an Indian company, so this is what I would expect. Uh, yeah, so this uh, well, is the if, this is the Jenkins Hyderabad. Uh, that's the one that we have from from an Indian locale. I don't we I was wrong. It's not Bengaluru. It's Hyderabad. Oh, okay, that's great. Uh, Even I'm not sure which building is this. Yeah, I me mean, neither. I assume it's some technology building there. Yes. Bangalore and Hyderabad are the tech savvy places of India. So that must be that's a great great idea. I just want I mean it seems to me like the British butler would have some unhappy overtones in India from the history or you just used to it. Mm, well, I I don't know much about it because I don't think of it that way. It's just Yeah. Not a problem for me. Okay. But you know, my the, the stuff in the last year, you know, just realizing other groups think of things differently than you know, than one might. So I've just been wondering about that. If this looks awfully Eurocentric to you guys, or it looks just fine. Mm. I'm not the right person because I don't usually think about things this way. It just I accept it uh, that way and uh, don't have much opinions. On, okay. Uh, this. Well, so that's this is definitely offending you. <laughs> no, no, no. Not at all. 
Okay, so I am back to the WebSocket connections. Did we? Did you come up with a phrasing that you prefer, or? I think that looks good to me. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm going to I'm going to go rephrase that one. Let's see if we've got the pull request referenced. We don't. So it's five seven one six. Everything's okay from your phone call, Mark. Uh, I just learned that I've got some additional responsibilities I need to take care of, but I can't do anything about them until after we're done here and it, there's no emergency. It's just, okay. uh, so one of, one of my church responsibilities, we did a major change yesterday and I'm doing the follow-ups and then tomorrow I fly to Alaska to visit my grandson or my grandchildren. Oh, how exciting. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It's going to be awesome. great. It will be a wonderful, grandchildren are marvelous. Everyone should have them. They are absolutely wonderful. Oh, yeah. But the only way you get grandchildren is have to go all through the work of raising children. So. And that, that, and that is, <laughs> that I've had that conversation with my kids actually, that sometimes I wondered if we should have skipped the kids thing and gone straight to grandkids. I've heard that. <laughs> Many people after meeting my animals think it is a good thing that I did not try to raise human children. <laughs> well. Okay. So I have updated that text. And so we've got that one corrected. All right. Now let's, let's take a brief look at the ones that have been commented to see if there are any there that you feel like should not be commented. No, they look all good to me. Okay, so as far any others, any uh, objections for anyone else? Nothing from my side. Okay, great. So let's call this part done. Uh, we've got other topics I want to be sure we get to. Updated the pull request descriptions to, um, uh, yeah, let's just call it that. All right, issues on Jenkins. Do you want to log that there's that ordering issue that we're not touching? But oh yes, right. Recorded ordering issue, um, developer and internal after everything else should be. Good. Thank you. Okay. All right. So let's let's go to our issues on Jenkins.io. So here, if we look at GitHub Jenkins. Oops, Jenkins.io and the issues, and we would like to see author. Oof, fat fingers. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five. Is that about what you expect? Right. Yeah. And it could have been one. I looked at that security session section. It's a hot mess. Okay. Um, and uh, I think you might know where I'm planning to get my source to do this writing and wanted to make sure that this is not going to cause any problems. I, I, I'm assuming you want to talk to Daniel and he's he's been one of the ones leading the effort to help improve security descriptions well i was going to go back to some material that the three of us did a couple of years ago oh oh good oh i hadn't which thought is all of that. written up that's what i mean i thought that's the low hanging fruit it won't make right it good idea right um, okay and the the agreement is that between you and tammy that you just stay out of each other's way right it is if in general though if it's if the content you're bringing is from cloudbees then i think she wanted some acknowledgement that it was cloudbees content okay so so th there would have to be a some sort of a thing at the bottom of it describing that it came from cloudbees but i think i think that's an interesting interesting idea go for it because i also think she's probably going to toss it and if ah, I, okay i want to get it preserved so it doesn't get lost Right, right, exactly. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some writing and they all I mean, there's like, 
some of those things get mentioned in four different files. And if you put it all together, you start to get the information. So, but I'm going to do what I can do quickly and put out PRs. And okay. then we can do PRs if we want to do more on any of the topics or whatever. Excellent. Well, and, and the cool thing about PRs to security, to any security topic, is that it automatically gets labeled with um, a security label and therefore gets triggered for Daniel Beck and others on the security team to review it. Okay, so good. that's really good because you some, you propose something and let's see if I can see it secure it. No, hmm. okay, just a minute. Let it, me look I don't think these. it got, I think it got automatically tagged as documentation, but did not get that, that I would believe, but I think if I watch, if I look at, let's look at one that's authored by Daniel. Okay because that off oh, fat fingers again, that will give us a likelihood of finding something. No, yeah, you must be right. I thought that they were automatically flagged with a security, but apparently not. Somewhere I saw something that maintainers may be able to add the security flag. Yeah, but this was, this was, I thought this was him where was it? Yeah, why not? Huh. I thought that they were labeled for that they, nope, apparently not. Just my mistake. So, but nonetheless, I think you should invite reviews from Daniel right. um, just because. I think that's a great. Yeah. And, uh, and then now when I go to do a PR, how do I tie the PR to an issue? Um, what you do is you you just reference the issue by issue number inside your description. In description. So you say, let's see if we can find one that's already got it that way. So recently closed, like No, that's not it. So let me show you how to do it. And we'll just, it's when you do it, well, all you do is you put in the, so let's find this one. If we were saying that it was resolving an issue, we would insert into the text here. Resolves or fixes number, the hash mark. And then up comes the list of issues. Oh no, this is the list of pull requests. I need issue 4568. Okay, so back to where I was. So if you'll just put in there issue like that, oops. Okay. Number 4568. Notice that okay. it detected that and it will then create the link. And if it doesn't, then we, one of the maintainers can create the link here. Okay. Okay, good. Let me, I will do it. And you go to Alaska when you come home. I should have some stuff out there. Great. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks for being willing to do that. That's wonderful. Uh, is, that, is that a worthy, we, I was going to ask you what you really needed, but I looked at that and I knew that is a hot topic. And yes. we have... I have some material that I think I can do something fairly quickly to maybe not make it perfect, but definitely improve what we've got. And so I just thought I'd go for it. Right. Um, request review from Daniel Beck and or Vadek Falone. And I, might, I might post to the chat group too, right? If anybody's right, interested. absolutely, absolutely. Um, is there, did you get my, I tried to send you mail, by the way, um, my, the, whatever the um, uh, Slack group is for the community, I'm tied to with my old, with my CloudBees address, not my personal address. Yeah, the. Get to it. So there's this, if you want to use Slack as a Slack channel, you'd have to use the CDF Slack channel. Right. 
Can I, but can I just enroll myself in that or do I have to be in? You can, you should oh, be, okay. you should be able to enroll yourself. And if not, let me know and I'll, I'll figure out how to get you invited. Okay. I, cause I tried to do it, but I may have just missed something. So, okay. 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 Yeah. Good. And I definitely did see your email. So I'm, your email is getting to me. Okay, good. Cause I, I still can't build locally. I've got um, I got Docker running, but there's a press something about Ruby is a problem, but I may try it. Oh, on interesting. System. Okay. And upgrading to Ubuntu 18 has cost me my sound. Oh, no. I have never in my life done a software upgrade that didn't cost me something that I love. <laughs> oh, dear. Um. Okay. So noted, we'll need to discuss it. Next yeah. week, we won't be able to because I won't be available. So uh, actually, let me make a note of that. So no meeting next week. Yeah, I have to cancel next week, at least for me, because... Because you'd um, rather play with grandchildren than talk to us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'll be traveling home from Alaska that day and we'll be exhausted and non-functional. <laughs> you non-functional is smarter than most people, but on okay. their best days, but that's good. Okay, canceled, okay. Actually, it's called cancel due to DevOps world because that's right. the DevOps world. Yeah, we probably shouldn't do it in here. Okay, enough of me and my pathetic problems. Um, Hacktoberfest, and we've got to we've got to wrap up Hacktoberfest today. Right? right. So here's here's a proposal. This one I wanted to review with the two of you as to how we approach this thing, and I'll be presenting this idea at the contributor summit October second as part of the intro to Hacktoberfest. Okay. So, so I think we should encourage contributions to migrate plugin documentation from the wiki to GitHub. And we showed how to do that last week. Yeah. See last week's recording and we need to, we need to codify it, it needs to be in the, to be in the uh, Jenkins.io document doc set, you know, docs, but that that can that can be done eventually i don't have to do that immediately right uh, and we also need the recording uh, stored on youtube because it's not there yet okay but the um, idea i had was how do we decide which things to work on because there are a thousand plugins that need uh that transformation but they aren't all of equal value right so what I thought was, okay, which ones are most likely to get attention if we submit a pull request? If a new contributor submits a pull request, and I thought first idea would be, what if we look at the ones that were released most recently? So I sorted by release date and the newest first, and we've got over a hundred in the last 12 months that have been released at least once in the last 12 months. Therefore, I think it's a pretty reasonable pool. Let's start with that and sort by re last release date. The other alternative is we could sort by installs, but the sort by installs is sometimes misleading. As you see here, last week we did Ansible, but it's actually number 91 in the most recent, recent release list. Ah, uh, but... And these and this is these are only ones that have not yet been converted, right? Correct. All the ones that have been converted are already removed from this sheet. Do you have to do it by strict formula? I don't know why. We I mean we could also put a we could also put a priority column over here on the left and do it one, two, three, four, five in whatever priority order we want. Or, I would defer to you because I'm I'm thinking that a mix of when released and how popular it is. I mean, we know Ansible is a big one and getting bigger, right? Well, it is, except the dismaying thing there is, okay, one week ago, I submitted that pull request, right? Uh-huh. And there has been zero activity on that pull request from any of the maintainers. Huh. And I specifically mentioned one of the maintainers in the comment. Ah. So, so... I thought, oh, here I am. I'm a credible voice in the in the community. I'm a relatively recognized voice, and yet it still didn't get any attention. 
Right. And, and therefore, a brand new contributor is probably going to get even less attention. Uh, so the other was, once we decide, hey, this is our list, I will do my best to extract the names of the maintainers and send them email asking for them to agree to review the pull requests. Yes. Now, and then you can adjust the priorities. Right. Then I could go to... Go ahead. Some of the wikis are really good, have really good information. Some of them are crap. I'm sorry, that's not a nice term. It, um, some of them um, could be higher quality and more complete in their information. And, and, and tell and tell the contributors though that this is a chance. Can you? I mean, I'd ask them if they can attend Hacktoberfest. I think it would be great if somebody popped up and said, "I will do this one," and they said, "Here's your contribute. Here's your maintainer." We'll work with you. Yeah, I'm, and but and that for me, I'll already just happen. be grateful if I get them to reply to an email message. Right. Most of them, I suspect, will just ignore my email. But I think you've got a good point that we we ought to ultimately have a priority column that we use to decide where we want to put the priority for for the people who are arriving to make a contribution. Right. Says so what's which. Your estimate, how long, once somebody's up and running, what's it going to take, about an hour per plug-in to do this, do you think? Yeah, so you figure last time we did it in 40 minutes or less. Yeah. And so I'm hopeful. Now, I do need the two of you to do an experiment for me. Could okay. you try opening this sheet and commenting on the contributor column? So I'm going to paste into the chat the uh the url to the sheet so diraj and meg could you open that sheet in your web browser and choose one of the one of the contributor id columns here and add a comment i'm not sure if the idea i proposed here will even work okay oh and i need to get rid of my second copy of it. there we go there we go Okay, so I see somebody just arrived there. Anonymous Liger. Good. Yeah, that's me. Okay, and now have you been a okay? And there is your comment. Okay, good. Yes. And it shows you. Okay, so then I could, as an owner of the spreadsheet, I could go in then and say, Diraj Joba. And is that your contributor? Your oh. Is that your, your GitHub ID? Did I get it right? Yes. Okay, that's good. Right. So that's what I would do. And that would then replace your comment. Good. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Diraj. Okay. I'm being a clutch here. So, and the, the technique you did was you, you just connected to it and had to do some right click action to comment. Exactly. Ah, yes. I only get two options when I right click. It's just copy or comment. Okay. Comment is a right click action. Yeah, action. you right click and it gives you an option to comment. Only I commented it and it gave me a check, but oh, oh and there's your comment. Doesn't show I up see in it. the list. I guess well, maybe it, you have to approve that to get it into a column. Well, it, it does show up, but ah. it only shows up. So it, it shows up as this little tiny square right here, or little tiny, tiny triangle on the top right. But I will get I email usually when you do a comment, and then I can go take action based on the email. Oh, Meg commented on this. Oh, okay. So then here, what I would do is I would put it like that. And then I would delete your comment, or I could just okay. leave your comment. And likewise here. And so now your comment is there, gives me a record that you're the one who put the comment and there is my entry for who's assigned to it. Right. And if somebody spams it, I can do this. Oh, Diraj already deleted it. I can do this to, oops, where is it? To mark as resolved and hide discussion. Okay. Yeah, but I think you've got a lot of knowledge. 
about these things in a lot of ways. And I think, I think you should cut the top list to assign to people. Yeah. And that, that's... And if we have 400 people show up who want to do six a day, we'll get them started on what's there and you can go off and make your list bigger. Oh, I'm not holding well, my breath for that happening. Yeah, but. certainly, certainly we've got, we've got more work than I expect to ever get don't get ever get contributors. We've got plugins. If we just go back five years, and there are many of us like me who use plugins that were last released five years ago. If I go back five years, it's still that's over five hundred plugins. So, yeah, and then but there's also going to be. I'm thinking what we ran into with She Codes Africa is that some of the most important plugins are these like. I don't know what they are, the native ones that are at the the bottom building blocks of Jenkins. And we found it was impossible to get anybody who wanted to talk about those when the she coders needed help, right? And and that's that's one of the risks, right? Is another way I thought of going through this list was look for in this list for any that are in the list of plugins that I use that are not. <laughs> documentation as code because if i'm using it it's it's probably a relatively active plugin so you're right there are many different ways we could we could treat this thing and you can your judgment i mean i've never known you not to have exquisite judgment on stuff but in this case i think you could you know make the best quick you can go you know and you can sort of look at the by age and the frequency and Mm -hmm. You know, something that's a month old and has two users, you know, maybe not so prior, or maybe it's something that's about to blow up and you know that in six months we're going to have thousands of users on it. Right. And and those those are all good insights, right? Something that it may be that we ought to weight the order of magnitude of the, the installs, right? Somehow recently installed, but only 13 installation or recently released, but only 13 installations just doesn't justify our effort. Right. And, Unless it's like a brand new technology that we expect to get really popular. Right. And and yeah, good good insight. Okay, good. So we'll consider adding a let's just do it now then. Let me just do that. And if somebody now. shows up at Hacktoberfest and says, Oh, I really wanted to work on such and such a plugin, if they really care, fine. Right. So but we'll put a priority column here. And for now, the priority column is going to stay empty, but I'll, I can put whatever formula we want in there to, to use that priority to, for that priority column. Good. Okay. Right. And you could actually, if you wanted to, you could comment your priorities, like that this is an extremely important plugin, but we're not going to be able to get any good reviews on the PR. Right. And or that's something like that. So also it's a low priority for Hacktoberfest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that works for me. What do you think, Diraj? Um, yes, I think that would be great. Did I see yeah. somewhere, Mark? Do you need somebody else to help on Hacktoberfest? I it's it's not on Hacktoberfest. I yeah. So that's the last topic before we close. Okay. So I'm going to leave this one: improving online help off the list. Because okay. for me, it's too, it's too heavyweight and needs too much involvement for it to be successful. We saw that yeah. with SheCode Africa, we were able to make it successful, at least in getting them introduced, but too much involvement. So I've got a workshop that I'm scheduled to do the 28th of September, but my co-presenter, Oleg Nanashev, is not available. Oh. And so what I was, I was hoping I could persuade Kristen, but she's not here today. So I may talk with her separately anyway and see if there's if there are others. What I Diraj, you might be might be a candidate for this one, except that it really looks for somebody who's done plugin development previously. And so I was hesitant to put you in the in this. You'd be a great lab assistant, but you may not be able to answer questions related to plugin development that that others would. Mm, yes, that is true. I want to attend the session, but just to learn. Yeah, and, and and I don't know what the registration is right now. It's 
the idea is we'll have a 90 minute session and our my goal is that each participant should submit a pull request to a plugin of their choice to help them adopt it to begin the process of adopting it ah. and that they should submit a, a pull request to convert a one of the plugins from Wikidocs to GitHub to GitHub based docs. So the idea there is already on September 28th, from 10 to 50 of these will have been uh, had a pull request submitted already. Yeah. And we'll yeah. test the process. And if the process falls over dead, we'll rapidly refine it. Yeah. Okay, so oh, I apologize. I'm running out of time. You, Any you other topics to before we end? I'm good. Get you on that plane. <laughs> and you've got stuff to do before that. I do. Diraj, anything from you? Oh, uh, no, nothing from my side. All right. Thanks to both of you. And I'll try to get the recording posted in the not too distant future. Thanks, all. And we'll talk in a couple of weeks, right? Yes, it'll be two weeks before we meet again. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.